Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Coffee with Joe from RVN Television in um, beautiful Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I'm Joe Osmendi, your host. But if you've watched this program before, if you're brand new here, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing of this show is the people I'm going to be introducing to you in a couple of seconds, because this is a really, really special show on a subject that a lot of people are talking about right now. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest, uh, Katie Sullivan, who is basically the founder of the Modern Compensation Care, but she's also the medical advisor of the Consumer Cannabis Council, and John Schickendanz, who's basically the chairman of the Consumer Cannabis Council. Okay, folks, first of all, let's, let, let's, let's tell my audience immediately, what is the, a Consumer uh, Cannabis Council, and what do they do? So thanks, thanks, Joe. The Consumer Cannabis Council is a, a public advocacy organization created to protect and defend the rights of adult cannabis users wherever they exist, for however they want, for as long as they want. One of the things that we recognize is that as the cannabis market continued to and continues to develop, there is a lot of energy and a lot of effort put in developing and fortifying the industry as a whole, which it absolutely should. But one of the things that's been overlooked and we think is of vital importance, if not the most important thing, is the customer, the consumer. How is the consumer being protected from runaway um, consumerism on behalf of these multi-state operators? And how can we protect the consumer to really use this medicine in a way that's best for them and not necessarily best for the commercial industry because at the end of the day we're the respons we're we're responsible for this industry being legitimized and and decriminalized and we want to make sure that it grows you know effectively for the consumer primarily definitely i'll piggyback on that there's a lot of interest right now in this um cannabis space and a lot of the information and education out there comes directly from companies that are selling you something. So um, one of the goals um, for the Consumer Cannabis Council is to provide objective information for people that, um, you know, if we're not selling you anything. We just want you to have the facts. Um, we want people to be able to use cannabis safely um, in, in whatever way they choose, like John said. And, um, you know, specifically if you're using it um, to treat an illness or a condition, you deserve fact-based information that uh, you know you can rely on when you're planning your care. And it doesn't rely. It doesn't require you to have an advanced degree in physics or chemistry or or have the discipline to be able to read a um, an academic uh, report or abstract in order to glean just the most basic information about how to take care of yourself through what we call therapeutic cannabis. Mm -hmm. You know, that, I'm glad you brought that up, John, because in the beginning you referred to cannabis as a medicine. And I think that people have a clear, can you clarify for me the difference between medical and therapeutic cannabis? Well, that's a great, that's a great question, Joe. Thanks for asking. So medical cannabis, we define as a cannabis regimen that is prescribed by a medical professional who says, and in conjunction with the patient, says, this is a discrete, specific medical issue that we are choosing to treat with cannabis or what we call cannabinoid-based therapies. Um, and usually those are in place of or in concert with other therapies or other approved medicinal applications. We call things therapeutic cannabis when the doctor isn't necessarily necessary to determine for the adult what is the most effective way to treat their day-to-day -day state of mind and body. And so for me, as a therapeutic cannabis user, it's really about how to maintain and manage homeostasis throughout the day, but also how to manage my anxiety and my stress when I need it. So I don't need it every day, but I absolutely on some days need it. And so it's to be able to have the freedom of choice and also the freedom of information to be able to administer that to me and to the people who may need it or who want it in a way that makes the most sense, but not um, having to jump through the hurdles of a medical establishment or a medical board or a medical provider who may or may not agree with your choices, even though your choices are backed up by decades of science. And I think that that's a good point. I, you know, as a medical provider who um, you know, I, I founded a clinic in Chicago where we 
focus as one of our main areas of service in providing comprehensive cannabis care for people, both medical cannabis use, where I work with people with specific conditions, diagnoses, mm -hmm. to help them use cannabis for that. I also work with other people who use cannabis as a wellness tool. Um, and and they do that on their own and, and we work together and I educate them and I'm there as a point person for them. And that's what the CCC wants to provide as well. So information so that people can make these choices if they want to use cannabis to treat things like, you know, insomnia, one of the most common reasons people use it. Um, it's incredibly effective and, um, you know, it's easy to do. You don't need to know much to start trying this treatment out and see if it works for you. What are some of the common misconceptions that you find with cannabis? Oh, there's so many. Well, I guess, um, you know, maybe number one is like you don't have to get high to get benefits from cannabis therapeutic benefits you okay. don't have to smoke um you know there are, especially in states where it's legal you know right now we're in a situation in this country where access is very spotty depending on where you live mm -hmm. um but we do have a lot of products on the market now edible topical that you know that um something like a cream that goes on your skin, you know, people should know that you can use that. That doesn't cause a high, but it does help with arthritis pain, muscle stiffness. And you can, you know, you can pick, pick a jar of that up and, you know, use it on your own, use it liberally to help with things like, you know, general aches and pains. And so, you know, and, and we have different products, products that are high in CBD. So there's, you know, a couple compounds that you hear all the time. THC, what we're talking about, the compound in cannabis that, you know, is, is associated number one with the high of cannabis. It's also mm -hmm. a great pain reliever. It's also good for nausea, for uh, muscle relaxation, so many benefits. Um, and then there's CBD, which is, you know, another thing that's kind of a hot topic in the country. And that's another compound in cannabis, totally non-intoxicating but a powerful anti-inflammatory, great for anxiety. It even, you know, helps with seizures. Mm -hmm. So uh, using a form of cannabis that's high in that second compound, CBD, is going to result in, um, you know, therapeutic effects without the high. So that's an option for people. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a big one. You, you don't have to get high. You don't have to smoke. Um, another misconception I think is, you know, cannabis it kills brain cells. I hear that all the time. You guys remember that old uh, commercial, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs with mm -hmm. the egg in the pan? Sure. Um, you know, that is not true when it comes to cannabis. Now, uh, we do know that cannabis, especially using high THC, that can cause some short-term memory issues um, in the moment, but it's also a neuroprotectant. We're finding that Patients with uh, inflammation in their brain who use cannabis have improved cognition because it's reducing the inflammation in their brain. So um, getting away from the idea that cannabis damages your brain or is bad for your brain, it's being researched right now, you know, for many neurodegenerative disorders as a treatment. So that's a false one. Um, the other one is cannabis is a gateway drug. That's what I was taught. You know, I grew up in the D.A.R.E. generation, and I was told, you know, you start with cannabis, you end up, you know, dead of a heroin overdose. And that was the trajectory. And that I really want people to know is not true. One of the, the main things that I do is work with patients um, with cannabis as a harm reduction tool to help them get off of opioids, to help them get off of benzodiazepines like Xanax, Valium, um, sleeping pills, medicines that are causing side effects and are potentially dangerous. Cannabis can be a safer substitute for that. And, and, you know, as we're seeing this now, there's really no evidence of cannabis being a gateway drug. That was just a misconception and kind of misinformation that was being spread. Um, what else can I think? You know, here's another misconception or something that you should probably know. Your doctor is probably not qualified to give you guidance or, um, you know, information on cannabis. The vast majority of medical schools, nursing schools don't teach this. Um, you know, these doctors don't even have a good working understanding of our endocannabinoid system, which that is the system that cannabis interacts with. We all have that. It's operational all the time. And it's one of the main homeostatic mechanisms of our entire body. It's a real injustice that we're not teaching this to providers. And then in turn, they're not able to give advice. 
Additionally, some providers are blocked from who they work with for being mm -hmm. able to even consult with patients about cannabis. Their organization or their institution might accept federal funding and being that cannabis is federally illegal, they're actually barred from talking to a patient about it. So you want to look for a different source of information, cannabis clinicians like me or the Consumer Cannabis Council. That's the type of information we want to have out there and have widely available for people because of this gap in training for our medical providers. You know, that is so important because what you're, the things and misconceptions you were talking about right there are things that I've heard from a lot of different sources. One of the things you said is, is you know, doctors necessarily aren't qualified or maybe interested in even talking about how, how cannabis can help people. And I think part of that is because, you know, the pharmaceuticals. Because you always think, you talk about anxiety and stress. Well, it's take this little pill, take that little pill. Um, is there any kind of problem with overdosing? Like, for instance, if you take an anxiety pill, you can overdose on it. What about cannabis? It, you would have to literally consume tens and tens of thousands of pounds in about a matter of 15 minutes to reach some sort of a lethal dose. We've never seen it in humans. Um, you can certainly um, over consume. And that's one thing about the education piece, you know, starting low and going slow with cannabis is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. But as far as overdose, no way. That's what makes cannabis so much safer than so many of these other drugs. It is literally safer and less addictive than coffee. And that's not a lie. Uh, so that's something to think about, you know, and when, when we even think about um, addiction, perhaps, right? Mm -hmm. Is cannabis addictive? Well, there's some studies showing maybe between six to nine percent of people who use cannabis develop cannabis use disorder. That would be what I would call a non-therapeutic relationship with this plant. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that they're, you know, um, a slave to the plant and they can't get enough of it. They've developed poor coping mechanisms with it. Um, they've developed tolerance to it and they're probably just increasing their dose to try to get um, more efficacy. So that's something that is a risk, but with education, I think it can be better. You know, consider alcohol. 30% of people who use alcohol will develop alcohol use disorder. Hmm. Big difference. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to overdose or addiction potential, I see cannabis as a very safe substance and, um, you know, especially using it, as John said, therapeutically. Um, you know, there is, there is a way to use this that is very safe. And let me just add to that, too. Mm -hmm. The reality about overdosing is that we need to really start having a, a legitimate conversation about the danger that um, pharmaceuticals really hold and how inured or inured that we, we become to that and how um, how numb we've just become. Right. And mm -hmm. because, you know, to your point, Joe, the the scuttlebutt on cannabis or really any of the let's say cannabinoid based uh therapies uh is that they you know they are potentially dangerous mm -hmm. they're potentially dangerous but the reality is that there's never been to our research an, an ex example of someone overdosing on cannabis fatally or even horribly the reality is that it is biphasic so depending on how much you take, depending on your metabolism and mm -hmm. your body, how much you take will impact your experience, right? If you can, you can take a little bit, mm -hmm. and you'll have one experience. And then, if your if your body reacts uh, similarly or is biphasic, then if you take more, then your body may react completely differently, much the way people may take Benadryl and get really amped up, mm -hmm. right? That it has there is there can be a biphasic experience, but for the vast majority of people, it is a safe, thoroughly benign um, way to manage you know, homeostasis, but also manage stress, manage anxiety, and a host of other issues um, that we can talk for hours and hours about mm -hmm. that have been proven again and again in clinical studies, in clinical settings, with peer review to help dozens of different very serious you know maladies and and and, and issues um, not the least of which are you know centered around women's health mm -hmm. right uh, you know pain re 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 regarding uh, menopause or pain regarding menstruation sleep 
don't even get me started on sleep and geriatric sleep huge impact for people over a certain age and helping them get the rest they need personal experiences i have people in my family who are over 70 who have terrible time sleeping they they found therapeutic cannabis and their world has changed i mean quite literally uh this person called me the next day and said i had the best night of sleep in my life where can i get my card it was that it was that dramatic so the reality is it's incredibly safe and our job at the trip C is to help people get the information so they can make safe uh, decisions for themselves and their families, period. Well, that's great. We have to take a break right now, but we're going to be right back with, with, with John and, uh, and Katie. And uh, this is a great, great opportunity for everybody to understand more about cannabis and how safe it really is. Stick around. We'll be right back. What makes a Wawa Club? Is it the crispy bacon on the turkey BLT? the endless layers of flavor of the buffalo chicken salad? Or is it a secret handshake? Nah. At Wawa, there's a club for everyone. Find yours today. We ride for those who died. The Police Unity Tour and RVN Television is bringing to you a show called On Your Honor, Straight Talk. And I'm your host, Patrick Monturi. I am a retired police chief from Florham Park, New Jersey. And I am also retired from the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C. I am currently, for the last 27 years, the CEO and founder of the Police Unity Tour. And this show will bring to you straight talk about law enforcement, the actions and heroism that is provided to you, the citizens of the United States, as well as their actions in falling in the line of duty as we could see some of the stories that surround that. Again, please watch us on RVN Television and be safe, take care. At Jersey Mike's, they slice your order fresh, right in front of you. And let me tell you, watching that can send a rush of emotions through a person. Excitement, impatience, baby-like wonder, indecisive, anticipatory chewing, nervous pacing, happy claps, and finally, jealousy, because that's this guy's sub. I should order one. Mm, good idea. Sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Well, welcome back again to this edition with Coffee with Joe. I'm Joe Osmendi, your host, but once again, that's not the most important thing. Most important thing is the kind of conversation I'm having right now with both uh, Katie and John, and they're, they're both involved with, with the uh, Consumer Cannabis Council, which is really a, a, an organization that's dedicated to teaching people the safety and, of cannabis use as, as a therapeutic and medical um, alternative to some of the drugs that are out there now, and also the ability to debunk some of the problems and, uh, and misconceptions that people are, are having with, with the drug, it's not a drug, with the, with the cannabis itself. So, so John, and, 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 and uh, please, please go over that again. There's so many misconceptions where people think that there is, you know, the, this started really when you, when you think about the, uh, the old movie about, about smoking weed and going to the next level of heroin, you know, Reefer Madness it was called, if you remember that, it was a long time ago. So, so you know, how do we get the people, how do we get consumers now to be able to look at this as a, as, a, as a real alternative to what we normally can get from the doctor for anxiety, stress, et cetera, insomnia? And how can we get those, how can people, we people get people to understand that? What's the best method? Well, the best strategy is to sign up for the Consumer Cannabis Council at consumercannabiscouncil.com. Um, and then get on our mailing list because we produce events every month online and in person where people can go and get the best, the best practices and the best information currently available, mm -hmm. and we make that available to everybody. And so right now, uh, we've had a couple of webinars that Katie has, uh, has hosted for us. Um, the first one was an introduction uh, for seniors in cannabis. And so if you go online, we have a YouTube page. All of our videos and all of our seminars are up on our YouTube page as our industry or I'm sorry, as our issue specific videos about particular aspects about the introduction of cannabis to seniors. We also just did a seminar about women's health in cannabis. Mm -hmm. Next month, we're doing a seminar about your family in cannabis, i.e. helping with, you know, autism or autism spectrum disorder, sensory processing disorder, epilepsy, et cetera, et cetera. And how the studies that are being done outside of the United States are finding extraordinary support and help 
for these types of ailments that are being used for children incredibly effectively. And so there are lots of ways that you can get the good information, but we want to create an easy path for, for folks to get information that is easily digestible. Mm -hmm. And also, to your point, to push back at the incessant and constant misinformation that a certain side of the political conversation wants to have. And honestly, I think it's detrimental to everyone's health and it's detrimental, I think, to good, good policy. Um, and so part of our mission is to push back and kind of be a little bit of a punch in the nose mm -hmm. to those organizations or entities out there that would choose to keep us in the dark ages in terms of cannabis and medicinal or therapeutic cannabis uh, for personal use. Mm -hmm. And so we write op-eds and so we welcome anybody, if you've got a position that you'd like for us to take and we talk about it, we wanna, we wanna be, for all intents and purposes, kind of a, an NRA for cannabis. Okay. Katie, can you add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think that, that that's a kind of a really good point. You know, what John is alluding to here is there's still criminalization really going on mm -hmm. as well. People are still, you know, people don't have um, free license to travel with their cannabis in this country. Um, for medical patients, that often means, you know, I have a eight-year-old with a cancer who can't go to Disney World on the plane with her family because she needs this medicine all the time to prevent seizures. So things like that, or, um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, every state is having issues with, you know, um, testing, right? They're like who, who, how are they gonna catch people for, you know, driving around and having cannabis on them? And, um, you know, Joe, you and I had talked about this in the past mm -hmm. about, you know, testing. Yesterday, something came out with the U.S. Department of Transportation is going to be allowing um, these saliva tests that can detect cannabis within 24 hours. So a lot sooner than a blood test, mm -hmm. For this is for purposes of law enforcement, but 24 hours is longer than the period of intoxication. It's not accurate enough. If you were, you know, you, you could be, have consumed cannabis yesterday, be driving to work today and get in trouble for that. Mm -hmm. That's what we don't want. And we need to know if this is going on. You know, we're trying to keep an eye on the climate around the country, and we want to make sure that people's rights aren't being violated um, because they're using cannabis. Uh, we're, we're moving beyond that. We, you know, I, I, it's hard when there's a change, and there are groups in society that are afraid. They want to keep things the same, but we need to look at the facts here, and we also need to make sure that people aren't being further criminalized for using this plan. And just to reiterate and to, to hop on extend a point, it is, it's, it is as much about defining and advocating for our rights as adults, because there is a certain amount of nanny statism here that we're mm -hmm. trying to actively push back because the reality is most of these state laws are in reaction to or in concert with the state police or the state law enforcement agencies in a way for the state law enforcement agencies to be able to control and manage their resources. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is that so much of this industry has been put at the behest of the state police and that so the impetus is for us as users to feel that we are um, uh, that we're getting away with something when the reality is it's our right. It's our right. No different than our right for life, liberty, and the pursuit of whatever. It's our right in a legal state for us to be able to consume this mm -hmm. to manage our health and wellness, however and whenever we see fit. The reality is, is that the rest of the country needs to catch up to that. And so part of our mission is to kick the country in the pants a little bit to help them figure out it is an incredibly benign, but incredibly helpful support for people in their health and wellness routines, period. And that I, you know, we will not sit back and say, oh, please don't take our rights away, or please don't arrest us. The goal is for us as an organization to be able to make it so that everybody, every adult 
over 21 in this country can use cannabis related therapies, however, whenever, for as long as they want, period. You know, this has been such a great show. I can't believe we're out of time already. Um, but you know what I'd like you to do right now? I'd like both of you to um, look into your uh, cameras and tell people how they can reach you and tell my viewers who should call you and uh, what they can do to help get the message out that cannabis is a safe alternative to regular medicine. Well, thanks for that. If you want to know more about the Consumer Cannabis Council, you can go to consumercannabiscouncil.com. You can reach out to me, John, at john, J-O-N, dot S, as in Sam, uh, at Consumer Cannabis Council. Uh, if you want to reach out to us directly, you can call us at 312-278-3550, 312-278-3550, or 877-9420-CCC. I love that. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can see me uh, monthly on educational events for the CCC, and I can be reached directly at my clinic. You know, I consult with people nationwide on medical cannabis. My clinic's called Modern Compassionate Care. It's based out of Chicago. Um, find, find me at moderncompassionatecare.com. All the details to reach me are there. Katie and John, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a very interesting conversation on a very, very intriguing subject that needs so much more education for the public to understand. And I thank you for joining us. And thank you out there with uh, watching Coffee at Joe this segment. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to get a hold with, to John or Katie and, uh, and get some more information. And we'll see you next week on the next Coffee with Joe. Thank you for joining me. Thanks.